Let's look at a very simple yet powerful activation function in the neural networks called ReLU, Rectified Linear Unit. Wait, did I say linear? What about the nonlinearity? Is ReLU linear or nonlinear? Let's see in this video. Welcome back with another interesting activation function called ReLU. Here is the summary of all the activation functions we have seen so far. Based on this knowledge, I would use tan h activation function for the hidden layers and softmax activation function for the output layers. These will be my default activation functions so far. But sigmoid and tan h do have one problem, which is vanishing gradient problem. They are only sensed to near around the midpoint. The function gets saturated at both the extremes. Once saturated, it becomes challenging for the learning algorithm to improve the performance of the model. So to train the model properly, an activation function is needed that looks and acts like a linear function, but it should be nonlinear because it should learn complex patterns. So it should imitate the linear function, but it should be a nonlinear function. That is what exactly ReLU is. If you see here, it gives zero for the inputs below zero and passes the same value for the inputs above zero. Now here is the question for you. Is it linear or nonlinear? Well, the function is linear for the values greater than 0, but it is non-linear for the negative values because it always output to 0. As it is linear for half of the input and non-linear for the other half, it is sometimes referred as piecewise linear function. It is such a simple function for implementation you take just the maximum of 0 or x, just like here. Let's suppose these are my inputs coming. You just keep only the positive values and make all the negative values as zeros. This will be the output of ReLU. This is very simple function. Can it learn non-linear functions like sine wave here? Even though ReLU is very simple, the combinations of these can fit any non-linear function. Let's see this in action. Let's see how ReLU behaves for different inputs and biases. If you see here, this is my actual ReLU. And if I take negative of it, it will become like this. And if I provide negative inputs for the ReLU, the graphs look like this. Similarly, the slope of this ReLU changes with respect to the weight values. So this is my original ReLU. If it is fraction, then the slope decreases. If it is more, then the slope increases. Similarly, when we change the bias, the axis shifts from origin. So if you see here, it is shifting from 0 to negative direction. And the same way, you can shift them vertically as well by changing the biases. Here you can see the ReLU output for different inputs. If you observe here, the ReLU input varies from negative to positive values and this is how the output looks like. Now using all these combination of values, we can understand that we can approximate the sine wave also using the ReLU like this. This is a simple network with two hidden layers of eight neurons each and it is able to approximate the sine wave pretty fine. And if we increase the number of neurons to 64, it fixes the wave perfectly. This indicates that the ReLU can be used to approximate any nonlinear function. Now let's look at the derivative of the ReLU. The derivative of ReLU is 1 for the positive input and 0 for the negative input. But it is not defined when the input is exactly 0. So the ReLU is not differentiable at 0 because of its discontinuity. But this can be solved by defining some derivative at 0, which is generally 0 itself. It solves the problem of vanishing gradient because of its linear nature. There is no saturation here. But what about the negative side? What happens if the input is negative? Then the output is zero, right? That indicates that neuron is not useful for the next layer because the activation output is zero, then it is not contributing to the weighted sum. We call these as dead neurons. But can it become alive again for different inputs? Well, there are chances. but what if the weight is negative or the bias is a high negative value? Then this always gives the negative values as the weighted sum. If you apply the ReLU on top of this negative value, then it will be always zero. The output is zero every time. These are called dead neurons and this we can say it as a dying ReLU problem. Well, this has some advantages. We'll see them in a short while. It's surprising that it is a very simple function, yet ReLU works great in most of the applications and it is widely used. Now let's see why it is the most used function. The first reason is its complexity. The function computation is very simple. Just take the maximum of 0 or the input. 
even its derivative computation is pretty straightforward its derivative is either 0 or 1 based on the sign of the input so the training is much faster compared to sigmoid and tan h and the second reason is its representational sparsity we have seen that relu gives 0 for the negative inputs that indicate the sparsity in the inputs for the next layers this is called sparse representation and it is desired in accelerating the learning of model now let's see the analysis conducted on VGG16 which is a famous network for image classification. The analysis is conducted to see how many negative values are coming before the activation function. If you see here these are the percentages of negative inputs going to the ReLU activation in different layers. The negative value percentage is 39 here. Here it is 55% and if you see here the negative distribution is more which is 68%. These are con 5 layers that means these are pretty deep from the input layer. As we go deeper you can see here the negative values are almost 80%, 90% here in the CON53. That means whatever the outputs we are getting from this layer, most of them are zeros. So as we go deeper into the network, the percentage increases. Sparsity helps in learning faster because it acts as a regularizer and gives better generalization. This is a machine learning concept and I have shared the links in the description if you want to learn more about sparsity. The next reason is its linear behavior. Because of its linear behavior, there is no saturation and the weight updates happen faster compared to tan h and sigmoid. So the training happens much faster. In fact, it gave six times faster convergence over tan h for the image classification task. And we can train deeper networks as there is no vanishing gradient problem here. And also the computation cost is very less. You can use large network with more number of layers. Now let's look at the drawbacks of ReLU function. The first one is exploding gradient. Though it happens rarely, but it does happen if the learning rate is high. Generally, we observe NAN values during the training. We don't know what is the reason of it. It is because of exploding gradient. The values are becoming NAN. And the first thing people do is reducing the learning rate. We haven't discussed about the learning rate, but you can think of it as a controlling parameter for weight updation. Whatever the gradient or derivative we got here, we multiply that with some value to control the weight update here. This is a hyper parameter. And we have to choose it according to our problem domain. It is not a learnable parameter. So we use smaller learning rates to avoid this exploding gradient problem. And the second reason is dead neurons. We already saw why it happens. It is because of this zero output here for the negative inputs. Let's see how we can avoid this. There are variants of ReLU that came after this for solving this dead ReLU issue. All of these have some output value for the negative inputs also. These actually solve the dying ReLU problem. Now here are the tips if you want to use ReLU as the activation function. Use ReLU as the default activation function for the hidden layers, not for the output layers. For output layers, we use softmax. This is by far the most used activation function for the hidden layers. So if you don't know which activation function to use, use ReLU. Use smaller bias values. We have seen in the weighted sum values, if we have large bias values, that too in the negative range, then it may cause the dead ReLU issue. Generally, we initialize biases with zeros or ones, but with ReLU, zeros are preferred. And next thing is the weight initialization. We initialize weight randomly, and there have been many studies on the distributions from which the weight should be initialized. So we generally use like normal distribution, where we initialize the weights randomly. After thorough experiments, they found that he initialization works pretty well for ReLU. So if you are using ReLU, then use he weight initialization. And the next thing is scaling your data. This is a good practice irrespective of what activation function you are using. Before providing the input to the network, you actually scale it. This typically involves normalizing the inputs to have zero main and unit variance. And the final tip is weight penalty. This is only for ReLU because if you observe, ReLU is not bounded in the positive domain. Whatever the input, we pass the same to the output if it is positive. So as we go deeper into the network, the weighted sums may grow larger in size. So it is a good idea to use some kind of weight regularization like L1 or L2 regularizations. Now let's see the Python implementation. It's very simple. Just take the maximum of 0 and the input. If you take the derivative also, it is 1 if the input is positive. Otherwise, it is 0. That's all from this video. In the next video, we will see the variants of ReLU. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have shared the playlist and the resources in the description below. See you in the next video.